Hello, this is Gary Schnitke, and this is a five-minute Farm Doc Daily dealing with variable cash rental arrangements in 2023. Variable cash leases have been gaining in popularity, and typically they have a base rent, which must be paid from the farmer to the landowner no matter what happens. My example, I have a $200 base rent. That payment to the landowner will increase if crop revenue times the rent factor is above the base rent. I'm going to use parameters representing 2022, 225 bushel yield, and a 640 price, and let's use a rent factor of 32%. Our crop revenue in that case is $1,440, and times 0.32 gives us a $461 rent. That $461 rent is above the $200 base rent by $261, and therefore an additional payment will be made. We have examined the rent factors for both corn and soybeans that would cause a variable cash lease to have the same level as a cash rent from 2000 to 2021, and those rent factors are 32% for corn, and 43% for soybeans. Again, same rent level, but different rents each year. If we look at that and look at projections for 2023, and this would be for a central Illinois high productivity situation, we see that variable cash rents made a $444 payment in 2022, well below our $595 projection for operator and land return. Operator and land return is what is left to split between the farmer and the landowner. If we have a $444 rent, the difference then from $595 minus $444 go to the farmer. For 2023, that same lease arrangement is resulting in a $411 rent, which is just $10 below our $423 return projected for operator and land return. What's happening in 2023? Well, there's two things. One, we are projecting prices to come down, but still at pretty high levels. We're using for 2023 a projection of 560 for corn. However, non-land cost and cash rents for that matter have increased dramatically in the last couple years. We have seen non-land cost increase from $634 per acre in 2021 to a projected $858 per acre level in 2023. That's over a $200 increase and that $200 increase is what's causing that rent on that variable cash lease to be very close to operator and land return. There are leases with higher rent factors, and I'm going to show an example with a 40% rent factor for corn and 45% rent factor for soybeans. That lease will result in, over time, a $30 higher return than our 32% corn factor and 43% soybean factor. And in 2023, it results in a $467 rental payment from the farmer to the landowner. That's above our $423 projected operator and land return. Leases with high rent factors, variable leases, have the potential to generate negative returns for farmers in 2023. If we're looking at moderate rent factors, we're likely okay. But if we're high, we could be looking at losses on those leases for 2023 from the farmer perspective. Besides the rent factors, one other piece to look at when we're looking at these variable cash leases is what the base rent is set at. Our lease, in our example, had a $200 uh, base cash rent. And we are using something below the projected average cash rent. Our projected average cash rent is $341 per acre. If we have the base at or above that level, we are not providing the farmer much, uh, much of a a cushion in case of price 
or yield declines, and it's largely just collecting for the landowner higher returns in those years in which we have, a, have higher returns. In some sense, it's a no regrets lease. We get high cash rent in all years, and then when returns are high, we get a higher cash rent. Variable cash rents at moderate levels have the potential to still generate positive returns for the farmer in 2023. Higher levels could generate negative returns. You can read more about this in the Farm Doc Daily listed in the video description.